Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here finally to share my thoughts about the Destiny 2 beta. Now that the console beta is over with and we had some time with it, I feel it's good to get some thoughts and feedback out there because that's what betas are supposed to be about. Granted, things could and will change from this day forward, but it's good to have it on record though to look back and reflect upon. Now many of my subscribers may be wondering why am I making a Destiny 2 video? Well, I used to make Destiny videos in the past, but I stopped. And with Halo news kind of in a slow period right now, I thought maybe let's cover something else in the meantime to keep myself busy. I do regret that I stopped posting Destiny 1 content, but I made that choice because of time constraints. I was working full time, taking six courses, and was already covering Halo. I felt burnt out, so I picked one game instead of two. To understand my point of view going in, allow me to say this. I've always been critical about Bungie and their decisions with Destiny. Even though I stopped posting, I kept playing as I had invested time and money into the game and found it more valuable to continue to play the game and see where they would eventually take it. In the end, Destiny 1 ended where I feel it should have started. Many people share that sentiment, and now we just experienced the Destiny 2 beta for consoles, and it's extremely hard not to compare it directly to Destiny 1's beta. Immediately everyone noticed that there wasn't a lot to do this time around. Destiny 1's beta had the Earth for us to explore, the Tower Social Space bounties, Crucible Iron Banner events, and a brief period where they opened up the moon for us to explore and complete a story mission. Destiny 2 had the first mission of the game which wasn't replayable unless you created a new character, two Crucible game modes, and one strike. There was no active social space, although they opened up a barren version of the farm for one hour on the Sunday, which I find it odd since it looked pretty complete in IGN's exclusive first coverage, however it was likely just a simple stress test. I am still disappointed that there were no chickens during our visit though. Also there was no place to buy gear, the loot was extremely limited, there was no level progression, character customization was locked and randomized, and there was next to no exploring, unless you went off the beaten path during the one strike mission available to us. Overall it felt extremely small and to any veteran player perhaps quite disappointing. Granted Destiny 1's beta definitely blew its load too early and left us all scratching our heads when the game launched and we already experienced a significant portion of the game and story. So it was sort of a good thing, it was a true beta whereas Destiny 1's beta content amount would easily rival that of any full game demo. As for how Destiny 2 feels, it feels pretty great, gunplay mechanics are just as you would expect, it feels familiar yet refined. The visuals are stunning but PC is definitely where this game will shine. I am disappointed that the game will be running at 30 FPS on consoles, However, it's not necessarily a big deal provided their revamped networking technology is robust enough. It is worth noting that this game does not have dedicated servers, but they have touted a new, supposedly better networking system. I just feel that Destiny 1 suffered from a bad combination of 30 FPS and terrible networking at times, which made the PvP experience aggravating. And yes, I also know it's a hot topic whether or not Destiny 2 could run at 60 FPS on Xbox One X, Devs have said they're currently evaluating 4K and presumably the frame rate possible on the console, but their efforts are on launch consoles and the frame rate is kept at 30 FPS due to CPU constraints. Since it's CPU related, I don't think Xbox One X will deliver 60 FPS, given its CPU is marginally better than the PS4 Pros. And for the record, the PC is uncapped, which I'll probably be switching to after it launches. On that note, I would love for Bungie to just make a system to allow us to carry our players from different platforms because the grind on multiple platforms does not sound too appealing. From my experience in the beta, the networking quality feels exactly the same. My internet speeds are 100 down, 30 up, and about 15 ping. However, I still experience players with game-breaking bad connection. Instances such as being shot around corners, this goes for myself and shooting other players, players just not dying, players lagging around the map, and delayed interactions such as killing an enemy only to see them fall over and actually die like roughly 5 to 10 seconds later. This is definitely disappointing, I hope Bungie improves this experience for the release. Besides those moments, Destiny 2's PvP feels extremely tight though. There isn't too much that I would change besides health regeneration, super and ability regeneration, and power ammo drops. I do enjoy the 4v4 setup, however part of me would still enjoy larger scale battles. I feel reducing PvP to 4v4 is a sign that they're moving away from those larger team battles, or even vehicle play in PvP, which is something I really enjoyed during Destiny 1's beta and the first year or so in Destiny 1, however vehicle play quickly dropped from the meta from my experience. 
I do hope that they don't force some sort of esports kind of mentality into every PvP experience though, as sometimes people just want to play socially. In the beta, I felt that power ammo drops too frequently in comparison to how often you earn a super and other abilities. It just feels odd to get power ammo 5 or 6 times or even more, and maybe only one and a half supercharges during a game of control. As for round based single life modes like countdown, I feel one, maybe two supers per game makes sense, just like trials. In the end, Destiny is known for its abilities, not just gunplay, and I feel this PvP is more heavily focused on gunplay and forgetting what Destiny is about. I do like that only one player can get power ammo and it makes it worth more and doesn't immediately turn into rocket bombardments like Destiny 1. The other little things that I liked about PvP this time around was the included information about power ammo and super in the kill feed. It just allows so everyone's aware when, where, and what they could face. I really love that touch. Also that the subclasses are displayed on top of the screen which takes away the need to inspect players and then you're just going through more menus and it was super slow. I used to do that a lot because I was sweaty like that, especially in Trials. Also, fusion rifles and snipers and shotguns are in power weapon categories now. Although after this beta, I feel fusion rifles need to be addressed as they're clearly the dominant. I feel rocket launchers should get more than one rocket, perhaps at least two rounds, considering every other kind of power weapon receives more ammo. Now, health regen was something I was still not conscious about when I played. It felt extremely slow compared to Destiny 1 and I found myself re-entering the line of fire too early from what I would attribute as muscle memory of when I think my health should be back. I know people have tested it to the best of their ability given gear and class stats and that it's very similar to Destiny 1 but what I think was the cause of this feeling was that the gear in the beta had some weak stats. If that turns out to not be the case then I would like to see the health regeneration systems and the recovery times reduced and addressed. The current state of health regen definitely promotes team shooting and is meant to help people finish off their kills. However, I feel that with abilities regenerating slowly as well, there's almost no way to survive a 2v1 encounter consistently despite the amount of gun skill you have. The time to kill is longer and combine all of these changes, it's quite different from Destiny 1's PvP. As a result, Destiny 2 clearly has a pack mentality which will be and is a huge deterrent for solo players. Side note, Bungie, please stop PvP matches from ever starting when teams are clearly not full. And while you're at it, don't throw players into a game that's immediately going to get mercy ruled, and please reduce the inactivity retimer. It's not helpful to have an AFK player hog a spot for so long, especially in this heavily team-focused PvP meta. On to the PvE side of things, I thought the story mission was great, loved the cinematics, the inclusion of NPC characters actually doing something. I just want more of that and I hope this story stays strong and interesting. As for the strike, it feels like a strike. It had some neat combat experiences with interactive parts of the map and changing encounters with the boss. It also was cool to see the new enemy types and old enemies with new mechanics. Some of these you had to go out of your way to find for yourself though. For example, you had to stick around the starting point and wait for servitors to eventually spawn to know that they behave very differently in Destiny 2. But in the end, the strike was a strike. We'll end up running it thousands of times through muscle memory, half paying attention, and hopes for some loot. I do feel though that PvE does suffer a bit from changes made for PvP. Power ammo drops were scarce, but Bungie has informed us that they've increased this in later builds, which is good. However, our guns never really felt like they packed a punch or had a major wow factor. Grenade launchers are a cool addition, however their damage feels underwhelming and this also goes for PvP. I feel the splash damage was a bit small, you had to directly hit them. If they just like hit the front of their toe, they just would walk away unscathed. The exotics are fun, but we shouldn't have to rely on them. We shouldn't have to rely on miniguns that auto-reload an SMG reliant on receiving arc damage or a hand cannon that explodes enemies. These aren't all too creative, we've seen all these traits before. Since the beta has ended, Bungie has let us know a few changes that they've made since. As I mentioned before, they told us in later builds, power ammo spawns more frequently in PvE. In these later builds, grenades are also more powerful, and kinetic and energy weapons also have damage improvements. But on IGN, they let us know from the beta that they've made changes to increase super regeneration across the game. Which is great, however no comment on health regen yet as far as I'm aware of. 
If I can summarize this beta experience that I've had is that we've more or less seen it all before and that's how I feel about this beta. It really looks like Bungie went for what a beta truly means, a stress test. They wanted to test their systems and they're adamant on keeping things a mystery until we the community discover things when the game releases. Which I feel isn't necessarily a good way to reassure someone about their pending Destiny 2 purchase or pre-order. It's also not a good tactic to advertise a game, because face it, betas are a huge marketing tool nowadays whether we like it or not. Bungie ended up stress testing things that aren't too interesting or concerning for most players. If we got a small taste of what IGN showed with their changes to patrol and world exploration, that could have been a huge factor to hook players in. I was immediately impressed by that video. But instead there was no big wow factor that would make anyone go I must buy Destiny 2 or I'm glad I pre-ordered this game. Unless you find yourself belonging to either one of those categories please let me know and share your experiences. I want to hear from you guys. I feel keeping things a mystery is okay for DLC advertisement since the diehard fans are the target audience but I feel too much mystery will hurt Destiny 2 since we're unaware of what to expect for the game. Will X and Y be more of the same or completely different? There are a lot of unanswered questions currently and I hope some get answered between now and the release. But they have already missed marketing those items to a huge audience that was playing the beta. Especially as this beta was very likely a huge deciding factor in many people's purchases. There was no big pull to get people back who may have walked away from Destiny 1 or for those players who were entirely new to the Destiny experience. If you happen to find yourself falling into one of those categories, please share your experience. I want to hear from you guys because from my research, I just haven't really seen that anywhere. Now a couple of the things that I mentioned earlier with Destiny 1's critical and generally poor reception at launch, as well as a PC release that's over a month later, it doesn't sound like a good idea to have such a small sample for this beta. I do remain hopeful though that there is truly a lot of content out there for us to discover. And part of me is glad we didn't play through a significant portion like Destiny 1's beta. It's a difficult balancing act and I'll admit I don't have an answer. With that all being said, how do you guys feel after playing the beta? What changes would you like to see and do you feel Bungie should have added just a little more for us to experience? Let me know in the comments down below, I look forward to reading them. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, as it greatly helps out my channel. My name is Chief Canuck and I'll see you guys next time.